Thanks for stopping by Pete's Garage. The next part of the engine build is to put the connecting rods onto the pistons. And keep in mind, depending on the engine you're building, there can be left side and right side pistons. If you have a regular dish or a straight dish, it doesn't matter, but the 440 has left side and right side pistons because the dish for the piston for each valve is a different size. And remember, the intake is the larger valve, the exhaust is a smaller valve. Now to make this easy for you, what you can do is put each cylinder head next to the block and mark on the block intake exhaust, intake exhaust, exhaust intake on the block. So when you are picking the piston for that cylinder, you can match up the piston size, or I'm sorry, the, the valve with the piston bore. Make sure you have the right piston for the right hole. If you get them reversed, you'll have to end up taking them apart. So after you do that, you have a good idea where they are. You mark your block. The first thing I like to do is to weigh all the parts. And I do that because I have had on occasion where a piston was misplaced in a box or a rod was misplaced in a box. So I weigh all the rods and I weigh all the pistons. All of the rods were almost exact. I think they were 881 grams. 880, 881, yeah. So um, one of them was different. One of them was, I'm looking at it right now, one of them was 882. And I suspect it's because it was a decimal place error. It was really close and since I didn't have a decimal place on my scale I switched to ounces and they were all exactly the same. So all my pistons and rods, they all weighed exactly the same. And when you weigh your pistons, make sure you weigh them with the retainer in the piston because that's part of the total weight. Also, when you're weighing the rod, make sure you put the bearing in there because you want to make sure you have the right bearings and none of the bearings are mixed up. If you have an oil hole in the bearing, make sure you put that in the right way. It'll face the hole in the rod. If you don't have uh, any holes in the bearing for oil, these bearings do not. So there is an upper and a lower. And the way you tell is, here's two rod caps with the same bearing installed in each. And you can see that, that red arrow there is pointing to a gap there. That's because I have the wrong bearing in there. It's off to one side. You have to switch them around and then they fit fine. Now one of the most common questions or text message or phone calls I received is someone's putting their engine together and all of a sudden the engine is tight. And I tell them you either have one, couple, or maybe several rods that are in backwards. Depending on the engine and the crank, it could make a huge difference. If you look at the connecting rod, the connecting rod has a chamfer all the way around. There's a big chamfer on this side. There's a small chamfer on this side. The big chamfer goes towards the fillet on the crank on the pin right here. It goes on this way. If you flip it around and if you put the small chamfer towards that fillet and you do that on several, it could end up causing your engine to be very tight. So the chamfer goes towards the fillet on the crank like that. And in order to keep it straight, when I put my pistons together, when I put my pistons together, this is the piston that's going in this cylinder. So it's actually going in this way. It'll go in that way in the hole. I always mark the front of the piston or the part of the piston that's facing the fillet on the crank. So when I put the rod on, I have my big fillet on the on the uh, connecting rod. I match that with the mark, and that way I'm always putting my pistons together. Then I number it so I know which piston's position this assembly goes into. Put a lock on one side of the piston and lubricate the inside of the rod with some assembly lube to make it easy to install the pin. Now I ain't gonna lie to you, putting these clips in is the biggest pain. Whoever invented these well, he's probably, in the, he's probably dead by now. But anyway, there, I don't know what the easiest way is to do it. There's an easy way for me, but you'll have to figure it out for yourself. I find that if you take this clip and if you just bend it to get it started, because you're trying to get it started in a groove, and if you just take it and start in this groove, and then sort of reach underneath there, and then peel this up, which is hard to see. I know my hands are in the way. That's what makes it so hard. You're trying to it can compress the spring as you roll it around. And then push it into the groove as it rolls around. Just trying to like wind it up like a spring. 
I'm going to try and do it without, without using a screwdriver because a screwdriver will scratch up the piston. So I'm trying to do it without using a screwdriver. It takes patience. And sometimes you get to a point where you just got to use a screwdriver. But I'm trying to do this in real time so you can see how long this might actually take you to do. Because it's not easy. Like I said, sometimes you got to get a screwdriver just to get it pushed into that groove. Then when I get to the end here, I'll zoom in here, show you the end. So when you get to the end, you want to try and work it, work the clip down. Just don't scratch your piston yield. And when you get it really close, right at the end there, that clip, there's actually a little indentation where you can sort of push it. Get it past, and then you'll hear it snap when you when you push it. I'll lightly push it here. There, snapped in. Now with the piston and rods assembled, uh, don't forget to mark the top of the piston so you know which position it goes back into. It makes it a lot easier for reassembly in case you happen to mix them up. I've done it once or twice, and if you mark it, makes it real easy to put it back where it belongs. You're going to put it back in the right hole. The valves are going to line up. The chamfer is going to line up on the crankshaft and you won't have any problems. And don't forget before you say goodnight, cover up your engine, cover up the pistons because we don't want any foreign material getting in there or FOD, risking getting dirt in your engine. Just keep it clean. Thanks for stopping by Pete's Garage.